powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on KAJ, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Don Fisher. The box of children's remains found in a shed in Missoula is gaining national interest and may generate leads into who these children were and how they died. MTN's Jill Valley has an update on the case. The lead investigator for the Michigan State Police confirms he's reached out to Missoula Police about a case involving three missing brothers from the small town of Morency, Michigan. The boys' ages match the general ages of the skeletal remains found in Missoula. These boys vanished in November of 2010. Their father claims he gave his sons away to an Amish family, but the children haven't been seen since. He's serving time in prison for unlawful imprisonment. Missoula Police Department spokesman Sergeant Travis Welsh says as this case gets more attention, it is likely other law enforcement agencies with cold cases involving children will be contacting investigators here. The bone fragments themselves are on their way for DNA testing that could determine if the children were even siblings. The results, though, could take some time. And at this point, there's no confirmed link to the Michigan case. Welsh says he's received calls from media outlets from across the country, including People magazine. It was a cleaning crew working on property in the 2100 block of South 12th Street West that discovered a box with bones and rocks. It turned it over to Missoula police. And then UM's anthropology department studied the remains and determined they were bones from children. The bones are not considered ancient, instead modern. It is unclear if the children died of natural causes 100 years ago or if they are indeed the victim of violent crime. Detectives have told us the shed where the bones were discovered was not a crime scene itself. In Missoula, Jill Valley, MTN News. And Walsh says there is a person of interest they'd like to speak to about the case, but that person is not considered a suspect. The man who died in a Wednesday morning crash on the Kalispell bypass has been identified. 31-year-old Colby Scott Burroughs of Kalispell was killed in a three-vehicle crash that happened around 9.30 a.m. on the bypass near exit 4. Authorities say that Burroughs, who was the driver in one of the vehicles, was wearing a seatbelt. The Kalispell Police Department is continuing to investigate the crash. Whitefish Mountain Resort opened last week, but they celebrated their official 70th birthday today, honoring the families of those who opened the resort back in 1947. MTN's Jack Ginsburg shows us why the day is important to them and the community. On December 14, 1947, Ed Shank, George Prentice, and Lloyd Muldown, with the help of many others, opened Big Mountain to the public. There were donuts and coffee to welcome skiers to the mountain before they took the 3,200-foot T-bar to the top. A lift ticket was only $2, and a burger ran you 25 cents. And Thursday, 70 years later, Whitefish Mountain Resort unveiled a new plaque next to Chair One to recognize the three men who opened the mountain and made it what it is today. Just like back in 1947, there were donuts and coffee for skiers and snowboarders. Both Ed and George's sons were there to see the presentation of the plaque. To see it actually up and displayed was, you know, pretty special. And I know my dad would have been extremely proud of that. Oh, I think it was great. It, it let people know around here what how the mountain started and how it became what it is today. Both Shank and Prentice shared some of their first memories here on Big Mountain. And we'd sat in the back of our old Pontiac coming up. We didn't have seats in the back. And my sister and I would be looking out the window waiting until we, you know, saw the lodge and we'd both be yelling, I see the Skeely Lodge, you know. And, and then the T-bar, I was so small that I had to ride with a tall person and they had to put it behind their ankles to <laughs> accommodate my, my shortness. <laughs> the Prentice family moved to New Jersey when Thomas was in third grade, but he remembers hearing his dad always talking about wanting to move back to Whitefish. I'd see the sparkle in his eye. I'd see how passionate he was about, about the whole thing up here, you know. And Thomas says that some of his father's words stuck with him forever. I think that talk, for one thing, got me thinking, even when I was from third grade through high school, that, man, as soon as I graduate, I'm going to Montana. I'm going back to Montana, you know. And that's just what he did. Prentice has been here on and off doing various jobs for years, anything from a ski patroller in winter to a cook in the summer, carrying on his father's legacy. In Whitefish, Jack Ginsburg, MTN News. And winter weather advisories are in effect for northwestern Montana, which should lead to a weather shift going into the weekend. For more, let's toss it over to Chief Meteorologist Erin Yost for a look at her first forecast. Erin? Yeah, for all of those skiers and snowboarders hitting up the mountains around the area, we've got some snow headed our way. Right now, though, still dealing with that low cloud deck. Valley inversions for most 
the most part are still in place across a lot of western Montana's valleys. That will all kind of come to an end as we move towards tomorrow, especially evening when our next system arrives. We do have winter weather advisories out as Don just mentioned. They begin Friday afternoon. They will expire at 11 a.m. on Saturday. This includes all of northwest Montana where storm total valleys could pick up an inch to four inches of snow. There will be more falling in our area mountains. I've got more details in your full forecast ahead. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Governor Steve Bullock has picked his next Montana Supreme Court Justice. He selected Ingrid Gustafson, a state district judge from Billings. She will take her seat in January, filling the spot vacated by retired Justice Mike Wheat. She will become the third woman on the seven-member court, joining Justices Beth Baker and Lori McKinnon. Bullock chose Gustafson over two other finalists, Helen Attorney Mike Lamb and State State Water Court Judge Russ McClea of Bozeman. Gustafson has been a state district judge since 2004 when she was appointed to that post by then Governor Judy Martz. And she has a law degree from the University of Montana, an undergraduate degree from Montana State. Gustafson will have to run in next year's election for the remaining four years of Wheat's term. The University of Montana will be looking for a new dean after the head of the Missoula College opts out to take one of the voluntary buyout options. Dr. Shannon O'Brien has been Dean of Missoula College for about two and a half years, coming on board soon after UM broke ground for the new school at the mouth of the Hellgate Canyon. During her tenure, O'Brien had been the central figure in getting the new college constructed and completed on time and overseeing the massive transition of moving Missoula College operations across town. But now UM interim provost Beverly Edmond says O'Brien has chosen to accept a voluntary severance offer, joining a number of administrators, administrators who are taking the opportunity to spend more time with their families, take early retirements, or shift their careers. Associate Dean Clint Redding will serve as the acting dean of Missoula College until the interim dean is appointed. The National Park Service is honoring the creator of a special program within the park that uses the help of a four-legged friend. This year, the creator of the Bark Ranger program at Glacier National Park is being recognized. Natural Resources Program Manager Mark Beal has earned the award for professional excellence in natural resource stewardship. Beal was recognized for his leadership on several fronts, including his work to initiate a wildlife shepherding program, dark sky conservation, and mountain goat research. The program uses a trained border collie, Gracie, to move bighorn sheep and mountain goats out of the areas of high visitor use, such as the Logan Pass parking lot. Beal came to Glacier National Park in 2010 and launched the Wildlife Shepherding Program in 2016. One thing we've noticed is there's a lot of uh, visitors that come to the park now hoping to meet Gracie and that's great because then I get to talk to visitors and remind them to be safe around park wildlife and uh, answer questions. Uh, that they might have about the park or about park wildlife and uh, so it's really you know taken off and gotten bigger than I ever imagined. <laughs> and the program is funded through private donations to the Glacier National Park Conservancy and as the regional recipient of the award Beal will compete against six other regional winners for the national award. And up next Aaron is back with the latest on winter weather headed our way and later a wrap of today's top national headlines including the decision to unravel net neutrality rules. What does this mean for you? Find out on KAJ.